Well, long to episode 789 of the Milk Bar. Jason Forrest here with you as ever. And coming up on the show this week, we'll be finding out about the Wensfield Canal Festival, which is taking place this weekend. We'll be having a bit of an atter with Charles Brunson. He is one of the stars of 101 Dalmatians at Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre from the 20th of August. John Suchet will be joining us to talk about Dementia UK, raising awareness and also how nationwide are putting dementia nurses into some of their branches. Linda Robson will be along as we find out about blue light cards. We'll be having a Bit of a natter with Manny S. Kang as we find out about his fundraising. And on top of that, we'll be hearing from Real Arts Workshops, Gary and Alex, as they let us know what they're doing as part of Yo Wolverhampton. That's all on the way on the show this week. Welcome to the milk bar. 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 Uh, Welcome to the Milk Bar. Now, this weekend sees the 10th anniversary of the Wensfield Canal Festival. Many, I'm, I'm going to say boats, I'm probably going to get that wrong, are already converging onto the basin at Bentley Bridge. James Clark is here to tell us more. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, Jason. I'm good. Good to see you. Well, good to have you along. And uh, this, this seems to be our annual conversation uh, these days, uh, mostly talking about the uh, glorious times on the water and the brilliant events that take place around it, because not only you've got the inimitable Neil Jackson providing a soundtrack to it all, but you will have thousands of people down there for the free entry event. We will, yes. Um, as you say, this is the 10th year now of the, Can- of the Canal Festival. Um, we missed a couple of years during COVID, but it's 10 years this year since we first started. Uh, and it's grown from an event which was a kind of pop-up market with one or two boats uh, back in 2014 to, uh, yeah, over 11,000 people visiting last year. So we're really looking forward to another brilliant weekend on the cut down in Wentzville. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. And it's such a picturesque place to be. You've got uh, the wonderful uh, shops, et cetera, around as well. And, of course, plenty of places to eat in addition to the extra pop-ups that you're going to have as part of the event. Yeah, we've actually got a record this year. We've got 18 boats that are due to turn up. So um, our trusty harbour master, Councillor Phil Bateman, has been pulling his hair out, trying to work out how to fit them all in. We think we've got a plan to get everybody in. So, yeah, the, we've got, I think, 16 trading boats. We've got a couple of visitors. Uh, there's a heritage boat or two coming. So you'll be able to have a look at how these boats were used on our 200-plus-year-old canal infrastructure um that's all taking place next to uh the nickelodeon pub down at bentley bridge and as you say uh food and drink there's loads of restaurants and takeaway places there we've also got a land market so we've got lots of people selling stuff from stalls across the car park uh we've got neil doing live music so we've got uh, i think 10 artists over the weekend all local acts um over saturday and sunday so there's going to be tons going on and it's, a, it, it's a, such a wonderful place to be. I mean, it's a, it's a lovely canal just to walk up and down and see the wildlife. And, it, it, you know, Wensfield, a, a bustling town, you're sort of walking through the middle of it, yet you're a million miles away from there. Yeah, absolutely. And it's quite, it's a bit of a hidden gem. I think the little, the basin down behind the Nickelodeon is really, really picturesque down there. And you're, you're right between a main road with Newcastle Hospital and the main road with Leisure Park. But actually... You can get lost, as you say, down there in nature walking down there. It is a designated uh, nature reserve, the the canal there is. Um, There was an otter spotted there during lockdown. Um, I know there's been a beaver spotted elsewhere in Wolverhampton, the canal network. So it just goes to show that although this this was an industrial heartland and this was, you know, this was what people used to move things around before the roads existed. But um, now nature is kind of taking back what was once industrial. Um, And you can really, yeah, there's weeping willows, there's, you know, um, you'll no doubt see the geese. Uh, last year we had about 40 Canada geese turn up and we had to kind of herd them in one direction because they turned up in the middle of the festival. Um, so, yeah, it's a real mix of a mix of things to do down there. And you know, go along, enjoy it, maybe pop and see a film at the same time, all sorts of things to do. And uh, it's, it's all about supporting the, the Wensfield economy as well. But so just looking down that uh, canal, though, uh, the glorious architecture, and, and I'm not just on about the bridge. I mean, the bridge itself is wonderful. But uh, you, you walk down there and you see these buildings, which are proper working buildings. And it's uh, it's, it's like yeah, a trip to the Black Country Museum uh, and, and with, with added boats. It is. I mean, the Peaky Blinders wouldn't look out of place strolling down the towpath, would they? So, um, as you say, there's lots of heritage down there. The bridge that goes over the canal there is a listed structure 
Uh, and I always love walking across it and, and rubbing my fingers down it as I go along. And you can feel the grooves in the metal in the steel bridge where the ropes for the horses that used to pull the barges were, you know. And that's really kind of very kind of real history going back in time. Um, and as you say, yeah, this is about supporting the local community and the local economy. Um, we've got lots of local traders there. Or we've got community groups there. Um, Road will be there. We've got the fun fair there. So if you've got kids, come on down. Harry Jones fun fair. Um, we've got some extra bits and pieces this year in terms of activities as well. Um, we'll have face painting, which will be free. Um, so it doesn't have to cost you a fortune. If you've got money to spend and you want to buy some cheese or some jam um, or some fudge from the boats, then that's absolutely fantastic. Likewise, if you want to have a, a carver in the Nickelodeon, you can do that. But actually, if you're looking for something cheap to do, you don't have to spend a fortune. There's free activities um, and you can come down and enjoy the canal. You can bring your pack lunch and sit on the side of the car park and enjoy it there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. The 10th and the 11th of August, it is the 10th anniversary year, Wensfield Canal Festival doing its thing, and, and very much the tradition of the waterways. Uh, it, they, they were used to take goods and services from our area across the uh, the UK. We've got visitors from across the UK bringing in some of their goods and services, as would have always been the swap around, but all that local content too, and uh, just a uh, an amazing time for families to come together and enjoy the water in a safe way as well. And that's the thing. Uh, we, we, you won't be able to see too much of the water because there'll be 18 boats in it. Yeah, I think if you if you walk to the end, you'll see the water, definitely. So. It, it, it will be available to view. That's that's the way we yeah. like it. <laughs> Where do we get more details on everything that's going on? Of course, uh, also for the social, so people can put their photos online and tag you all in over the weekend. So all the details are on our website, which is wensfieldcanalfestival.co.uk. Uh, and we are Wensfield Canal Festival on Facebook. There will be loads of stuff going up there during the weekend. And as you say, please do come and tag us um, and share your photos and stuff because it's great to see people enjoying the event. Just have an absolutely brilliant time of it. Don't eat too much cheese. And I uh, look forward to finding out more about what's going on over the weekend. It's the fudge I've got to watch out for. But thank you, Jason. <laughs> One Hundred and One Dalmatians is at Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre from the twentieth through to the twenty fourth of August. A treat of one hundred and one dogs running around. How's it going to work? We'll find out. Uh, one of the henchmen in the show uh, is Charles Brunton, who joins me now. Hello, sir. Hello. You're right. I'm good. It's good to have you back at the Grand for starters, because uh, oh, it, yes. it was bed knobs the last one you were here for. Yeah, bed knobs and broomsticks. It was wonderful there. Um, I've been to the Grand quite a few times now with different shows, so it's always nice to go back. Beautiful theatre. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's great to have such a, a, a talented cast as the one we have arriving with 101 Dalmatians. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. I know you've been having a great time with it uh, during the run already. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've been open now for about six weeks on tour um, and it's been really well received. The audiences have gone absolutely crazy for it. So we're thrilled. <laughs> so uh, give us a bit of the background on on uh, on the uh, not only the, uh, the the Dalmatian content, uh, but also uh, how the rest of the show works. Oh, what can I say without ruining <laughs> <laughs> that's, this is, that's why I'm I'm leaving it to you. You see, I'm not going to chance. Wrecking the story. <laughs> Fair enough. So we are dogs throughout the show are mostly uh, puppets and sort of warhorse style, I'm going to say. <laughs> That's the best way to describe them. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's literally, it's incredible uh, how even when I'm performing with the, with the actors who are manipulating the puppets on stage, I literally, literally get to the end of the performance. And I suddenly realise I haven't actually looked at the, the puppeteer once. You literally just believe that a puppet straight away. It's absolutely incredible. We had a very long rehearsal period with a big, um, like a puppet uh, directional team on board. And it literally, the results are absolutely outstanding. I, I, I've never been in a production quite like it with so many puppets that you fully believe and invest in. Um, there's one particular moment in Act Two, which is absolutely heartbreaking. And the audience, there's not a dry eye, dry eye in the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but is it 101 puppets? I'm sure they're not all on stage at the same time, are they? They've got 101 <laughs> characters in there. You may get a glimpse of 101 near the end of the show, I believe. But... <laughs> okay, again, no spoilers. That's the way we like it. Yeah, but yeah. but th this is such a, a fun family show, uh, witty songs and uh, amazing choreography, and 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 that's not just from you, is it? That's everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, the show uh, has been completely reworked. Uh, the rehearsal period every day, it was like a brand new version of the show to keep rejiggling things around to make it as exciting as possible. And the, the, I mean, the results have been fantastic. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. When we first got the audience in to watch. 
And it's just been outstanding. We've had standing occasions at every performance. It's, it's just been really, really a thrilling experience to be part of. <laughs> so tell us about your role as a henchman then. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I play Casper, which is Cronin Deville's evil psychic. Um, maybe a little bit dumb <laughs> psychic, but uh, also quite lovable. Uh, there's a guy called me and Danny who are a bit of a double act. And uh, throughout the show, we do all of Cruella's evil bidding for her, including a very funny moment where we steal all the puppies um, from uh, <laughs> um, from from the household. And uh, it's a bit like, you know, um, Home Alone, the two gangsters off the Home Alone. It's a bit like that vibe <laughs> going on. Um, and then but obviously when it gets to the end of the story, um, we end up being sort of the goodies <laughs> and yeah. being part of the Crentable's demise. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, so it's all spoilers. But I, mean, I think most people know the story because if, if there is a copy of the original DVD from Disney oh, yeah. in the household, it's been probably played at least 101 times. Yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely 102 times in my household to get <laughs> the character right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's uh, with Fato as Cruella de Vil, this is going to be an interesting one as well. I mean, she's, she's normally yeah, all sweetness and light in steps. So, this is a, a oh. bit of a change of character for her. Oh, she's absolutely wonderful. It's been such a blast working with her. We've, uh, throughout the tour, we have a, a couple of different Cruella de Vils. So, we've got uh, Kim Marsh. Um, we have in Wolverhampton, Fatosa, and later on in the year we get Kerry Ellis playing the role. And um, I mean, they're all lovely people, absolutely dream to work with. And uh, But Faye, she's so gorgeous, literally. She's such a laugh to work with on stage. She's really playful as well. She really gets involved with the cast and everything. She's absolutely glorious. And, and they say it is a big family cast. As you say, you, you may not look the puppeteers in the eye, but certainly they're, they are there and, and it's, it's all through their skill that allows that to actually happen. Oh. It's absolutely incredible. You get to the end of the performance and you realise, oh, I haven't looked the actual people once in the eye yet. <laughs> you fully invest in these puppets. I mean, uh, it, it's, it really is uh, an absolute uh, dream experience to be a part of something as bonkers as this show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and do you actually get a bit of choreography yourself? Because, I mean, you, you, you're, you're so used to a bit of dance, aren't you? Oh, yes, totally, yes. We've got a bit of choreography, me and, me and Danny do. Um, not just the slapstick stuff where we steal the puppies, but we've got a bit of choreography in the in the, in the the pub scene beforehand <laughs> <laughs> where we get convinced, our career of DeVille convinced us to go and steal the puppies from the household. So there's a bit of a choreography in there as well, but it's quite, quite fun on the show, I have to say. Um, I drink about two litres of water to get through each performance. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, the, the, the throat dries out and you can't do a song. Exactly. Oh, and those fans from John Lewis, you know, the little handheld fans, they've been a dream to get me through the week, <laughs> through the show <laughs> with the wings. Absolute dream. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the joys of uh, costumes and, and and the like in the summer. It, oh. it, it... Yeah, uh, there's one point in the show I'm wearing three jumpers because I've got so many quick changes. I'm wearing three jumpers on top of each other while sweating and doing a dance number. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge. It's keeping <laughs> you in shape, though. Yes, it is actually. I haven't gone to the gym once since we started. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to, um, the, the musical's been written by Douglas Hodge uh, for music and lyrics. Uh, John McKnight uh, is obviously the book behind it. And uh, it, it's a stage adaptation from Zinni Harrison. These are all names that are well respected in the industry, which is what brings together such an awesome show. Oh, absolutely. And they've been so hands on with it as well. Um, so sometimes when you do a production, um, you don't ever get to meet the people that actually have written, written the show or, you know, created themselves. Um, you, you just get to work with the director and the choreographer. In this case, it's been the entire team have been fully involved and fully invested in it. Even when we first opened, they were still there all the time, you know, uh, changing the show, changing sentences, giving notes, um, changing musical bits. The amount of musical changes we did in the last week was hysterical. The printer was nonstop for the band with the sheet music. Uh, <laughs> but it's really been quite hands on with the creative team. They've all been very heavily involved in this this version of the show, which is uh well, it's just been really well. I'm so pleased to be part of it. It's been so well received. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still a bit of a high from last night. Literally two shows yesterday um, in Manchester and a full standing ovation from all three tiers. I mean, what more could you possibly ask for <laughs> as an actor? It's gonna... It's going to be so well received. And of course, uh, in when Wolverhampton, you've got a relaxed performance on the Thursday. That's the 22nd at two o'clock. Uh, BSL uh, at the same time. So that's going to be uh, making it much more accessible to, uh, to those who, uh, who need that. And Auto described on the Saturday the 24th alongside captioning of that performance too. So uh, this, this is really a show for everybody. It just may need to, to check which performance you need to come to. Yeah, absolutely. It really is a, is, is a family um a family production for everyone, really. It's, uh, I'm trying to describe how the vibe of the show is probably a, a, a wonderful classic book musical 
with a nod to the wonderful British tradition of pantomime. <laughs> it's definitely not full panto, though, but it's just got a nod to it every occasion, particularly mine and uh, Daddy's roles. This but is it a really is a family show for everyone. There's nothing in there that anyone would uh, not... It wouldn't be appropriate for anyone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's been really well presented. Well, it's, it's going to be absolutely amazing. I'm actually sure. Break a leg and uh, okay. make sure you don't catch any Dalmatians that don't want to be caught. Okay, get <laughs> behave. Uh, it's, uh, it's going to be absolutely brilliant. 101 Dalmatians, the musical at Wolverhampton's Grand Theatre for the 20th of August through to the 24th. And uh, so with those uh, uh, captioned, uh, signed and uh, relaxed performances, as well as audio described, all thrown in for good measure to make sure that everyone can enjoy the show at some point. And of course, it's during the school holidays, so it's going to be busy, 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 isn't it? Very, very, very busy. And we can't wait. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to be back at the ground. It's such a beautiful theatre. I love it there. <laughs> well, the evil henchman, hopefully, who mends his ways. Charles Brunt, thank <laughs> you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, yeah. a new research has shown that apparently 91% of foremost NHS workers find themselves unable to stop when it comes to helping and caring for their communities. To tell us more about the research and quite what's going on with the Blue Light Guard, I'm joined now by Linda Robson. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm very proud to be part of this campaign. Um, the NHS started in 1948 and it's looked after all of us for those, all those years. And I've had a few times in hospital myself where I, one one time in particular I had gallstones, they damaged my pancreas and I was in hospital for six weeks, um, really, really ill. And they managed to sort me out. And here I am all these years later. Keep you on our hard... TV screens. That's a bit that counts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I think what's hard for them is that they're used to caring for people. And then it's not a job, is it, for them? It's a vocation. They love mm -hmm. their job and they love looking after people. And I think they find it really, really hard, Like especially now in retirement and whatever. A lot of, a lot of the like NHS workers, all of the workers, emergency services, armed forces, um, they're, they're, they struggle to retire. So um, I think what they're doing is they're volunteering because they just can't let the job go. And um, basically, I feel the same because I'm 66 and I can't think of anything worse than retiring. Um, I'm lucky because on Loose Women, we've got Gloria, who's in her 80s, Janet's in her late 70s. Um, a lot You're of the youngster, really, aren't you, to be fair? Yeah, a lot of us are in our 60s now. So I never, ever want to retire. I've been working since I was 10 years old and I never, ever want to give up. I love going to work. What would I do? My kids have moved out. I'd be just sitting indoors with the dog. <laughs> uh, so no, I'm lucky that I'm I'm working. But I'm very proud of this campaign as well because I don't think sometimes they don't get as much credit as they should get because they are amazing, especially during COVID. Look how terrible it was in those times mm -hmm. and that. And a lot of the staff and obviously people lost their lives then. Um, but they it. really, really are amazing. And this blue card, this blue light card, is an amazing thing because what it does is it gives them they get discounts on lots of things you can go on the website and like it can be cine world all different things they get discount for it and, and so then this continues into the retirement as well past when they would have had the blue yeah. light card when they were working well they've spent all their lives looking after us so now it's our turn to look after them absolutely and uh, so yeah, any discount any little thing that helps and obviously pensions aren't quite what they are <laughs> yeah they could be uh, which is which is why you're going to be working probably for until you're about 90 aren't you because number yeah, one you can't I stop am. you number two I know. I, there's, I there's no such things as a pension in your game i have actually got a pension like now i'm 66 now so you get your pension at 66 but um, the kids have taken control of my money so i'll get pocket money on a monday and pocket money on a friday <laughs> and if i ask for money on tuesday my daughter goes no you've had your pocket money <laughs> <laughs> then you just go and eat the stuff out of the green room at work. So you've, yeah, you, you've exactly. got your lunch sorted, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> But I say it, it is good to, to, to hear this sort of thing and, and to really it highlights the, the service that they've had. I mean, I know uh, I was uh, at the scene of a, a, what was, uh, somebody who's got run over, sadly, uh, yeah. last year. And the person in the car behind me was a former paramedic. They dived straight out the car, got they, on with yeah. it and, and, and sorted out the poor girl who'd been bumped by the car. Yeah, it just doesn't go away. Even if they do change no. possession, professional retire, then, you know, they're, they're still there for us. My daughter's best friend, Madeline, is a paramedic. And it just makes me wonder some of the sights that she must see and that. But she yeah. just gets on with it. She's like, when she first started, she said, I don't know if I can do this job. But now she's been doing it for a couple of years. She loves it. 
And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's absolutely a vocation. When somebody's there, that they 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 will go with it, won't they? And uh, you know, it's uh, it's also interesting to see how the how the blue light card works because uh, yeah, there are so many different places that they can get a discount and be looked after. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's a website that you can go to. It's bluelightcard.co.uk, and it gives you all the information that you need. And they can sign up there and uh, then you know, receive these discounts, be part of a community which is being <laughs> recognised appropriately. And, and it's uh, not just the NHS, is it? It's for mm -hmm. emergency services, social care sector and armed forces as well. Sometimes a lot of those get forgotten, but hopefully with this they won't be forgotten. Fingers crossed, and uh, I, I I know that uh, yeah there ought to be like a, a, an equivalent for the loose women, haven't there? Uh, so you, you can get a, a, a discount where you go as well. With that, with, are you going to campaign for that, or should we just keep it at the blue no, light card? No, let's leave for it now? for the people that really need it, and <laughs> the people that really deserve it. Yeah, absolutely, doing a good job there. Well, uh, it's it's always good to catch up with you, Linda. I mean, keep, keep doing the good work, keep us smiling on TV, keep championing the causes as well, because I know I you, you're keen to do that, aren't you? Oh, I've, over the years, I've done my share. I jumped out of an aeroplane. I climbed a man in Juan Ben Nevis. Um, I've done some amazing things. But um, as I'm getting older, I'm finding it more difficult to say no to something. If it's something I've never done before, then I'll give it a go. OK, you do that. And meanwhile, find someone with a blue light card to go and treat you to dinner as well. That sounds like a plan. OK. <laughs> they can get, or get you a yeah, discount at Cineworld. You can go and, go, and, go and watch a film together. I think that, that that's something we should do for you. I mean, because let's face it, you are a national treasure, aren't you? I am. If you say it enough, then people believe it. Oh, I believe it for definite. Thank Linda, you. Lovely to speak to you. Thank you for joining thank you us. Very and much. Uh, let's, let's remember all those who, who deserve that blue light card. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. With around a million people already suffering from dementia within the UK and that expected to rise to 1.6 million by 2040, there are calls to make sure that there is support not only for those with the condition itself, but also for the carers who look after them. To tell us more, I'm joined now by John Suchet, a broadcaster and author whose first wife, Bonnie, passed away following a dementia diagnosis, and also by Dr. Hill Lajeo, CEO and Chief Admiral Nurse at Dementia UK. Good morning. Good morning. Jason. Right. So first of all, I mean, John, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to start any story talking about the loss of a loved one. But uh, it's uh, almost a decade now since uh, your wife passed away, your first wife passed away from uh, dementia. And obviously, it's it's realising what's wrong to start off with, isn't it? Because dementia is one of those things that often creeps up on people. Yes, uh, that, that's absolutely right. And if I could make a comparison, although comparisons are dangerous and invidious, but, um, you know, if you think you've got cancer, for instance, there'll be a reason why you think that. Um, you found a lump somewhere or you've got a rasping cough or whatever it is, and you go to see the doctor and you explain what you've discovered. Dementia is entirely different. I mean, who hasn't forgotten the name of somebody? Who hasn't forgotten where they've put the car keys? Who hasn't struggle, struggled to answer a particular question? And at first, if you're living, if it's your spouse, as it was with me, um, you're living with them, you step in, you answer for them, and you say, oh, that's over there, darling, you know where you put it last time. And that can go on for a long time, a year, two years, three years. And then the day comes, often an outsider will come in, maybe a family member who you haven't seen for a long time, and this happened with me, take you aside and say, I think there's a problem. And you think, oh my God, yes, there is. Why didn't I realize that? Then you start going to see the medics and with a suspected cancer the medic if they think it is will take a biopsy have it chemically examined for you and you will get a diagnosis by and large with dementia you are you go to see your gp and the first line of treatment or or, or diagnosis is the famous 30 questions who's prime minister what day of the week is it what building is this it's not exactly scientific um, and you struggle with that. And Bonnie, I know, I think the first time we gave her the test, she got 28 out of 30. And the GP actually said, I don't really think there's any problem here. See how it goes. Come back in six months if you're worried a little bit more, if you're still worried. Um, and that's got to improve. We need to improve diagnosis. And once you get the diagnosis, we need to improve care. And that's where Dementia UK and Admiral Nurses come in. 
and Hilda, we're looking here at uh, research that's been put together by Nationwide, and your nurses will be seeing all sorts of concerns for those people who were, uh, you know, uh, in the community having issues. Not only will they have you know, yourselves and your team as, as carers, but also they'll have family carers too. And everything yes. you know, comes up as an issue from finances through to uh, you know, just general day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. Uh, so through the Nationwide Fairer Futures, it means that we will be, as Admiral Nurses, in around 200 of their 600 branches across the UK. So it enables families to get access to a specialist dementia nurse to ask all of those questions that they might have or their concerns for a loved one that might be showing some changes, as John has just indicated. So we've started the pilot already in Wiltshire and then from September we will be launching these uh, clinics across those 200 branches. If people want more information on that, they can look on our website, so that's DementiaUK.org or on the Nationwide website to find more details of when the nurses are going to be in the various branches. So as dementia specialist nurses, we handle lots of different issues from families, right the way from pre-diagnosis, so people that are worried about what's happening to a loved one or to themselves, right the way until end of life. And I mean, here we're looking at that sort of support, not only for the patient who will, in many cases, be confused that they don't understand the way they have done previously. And because it's not uh, one of these things that suddenly cuts off, it is sort of phased. There are good days or bad days. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, it, when you're looking at Bonnie, John, you, you, you had some days where you wouldn't even have known there was an issue. Yet other days she would have been confused uh, just about you know, having breakfast. Yes, that, that, that's entirely right. And um, when we finally got the diagnosis, um, then where is the care? Where are the people to help you? And I was very fortunate in that I happened to live in a postcode where the local NHS had two Admiral nurses and I was offered the help of an Admiral nurse. And important to stress, if, if, if people have, have never heard of Admiral nurses, it's nothing to do with the Navy. Um, the name comes from an elderly chap who developed dementia um, and whose family realized there was no help at all. And they founded the charity that is now Dementia UK to provide special dementia nurses. And the old chap who developed uh, the dementia was a great yachtsman and his nickname was the Admiral. <laughs> so it's slightly confusing, but these Admiral nurses, as Hilda says, are specially trained dementia nurses who understand that very often the carer needs help as much as the person with dementia. The strain of caring, especially for a spouse as opposed to an elderly parent or grandparent with dementia is overwhelming. Um, and you say that Bonnie may have had good days and bad days. That applies every bit as much to the carer. And it is a known fact, I think Hilda will confirm this, that often the carer can die before the person with dementia. Such is the strain of caring. I think because there's a lack of support for family carers um, out there, I think the carers can often sh uh, show the signs of, of strain. So cardiac issues um, can be an issue, uh, stress, obviously, depression, all of those uh, kind of disorders that can cause further health problems, as well as uh, kind of the caring aspects that the person will actually have. And caring isn't something that you can just stop doing. You can go off shift at the end of a seven hour. You've got this for 24 hours of a day. Yes. And I think people forget the 24 hourness of working and living with somebody living with dementia. That is so true, Jason. So true. It is a full time. It's a full time yeah. job. Mm -hmm. And the there's love involved as well you're not just mm. you're not just professionally caring for someone you are seeing someone a family member slowly retreating from you slowly moving away and it's not just a strain it's heartbreaking or as hilda's just said it can genuinely be heart harming yeah. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, uh, I I know from uh, people I know who know you. I mean, you you've got a good support network. You're a, from a, a big family, so you'll have had uh, a level of support there. Uh, but even so, it's it's a difficult thing to deal with. Effectively losing somebody not only when they pass, but several times over the years as you head there, as different parts of their personality go, or as you say, they retreat into themselves. So a, a difficult situation for everyone involved, not least the person who is uh, suffering from the dementia. It's uh, itself, and you know, if we're able to get early diagnosis, is there a better prognosis there? I think I'll come back to a, a comment you've just made about if you've got a larger family, then often you've got more support. That isn't the case from my mm -hmm. experience. Very often, family members and your kind of your friend, your network reduces when one person gets the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily get the support that you need, and then that can lead you to feel quite resentful to those people that aren't there for you that you've probably been there for before so that kind of adds to that feeling of guilt of anger of betrayal in effect as well as the caring responsibilities um, so getting a diagnosis is the start getting a diagnosis though is a bit of a postcode lottery some areas are functioning at around a six week wait some are beyond a year wait to get the diagnosis effectively so you're sitting on a waiting list waiting to get the assessment to be able to get a diagnosis but once you've got that diagnosis it means that there will be services and support you can be signposted towards that can give you that help and, and you need it can help you get that financial information that you need as well helps you to get the legal aspects like lasting power of attorney put in place so it is vitally important that people do get an accurate diagnosis in a timely way but we we need to do more on getting that timely accurate diagnosis as a country Absolutely. Well, once again, where can we go for help with what's going on and also to be able to uh, visit those uh, uh, representatives from Dementia UK and sort of branches? Yes, if you go to Dementia UK website, it will give you the dates and the times when people are going to, Admiral nurses are going to be in the cl uh, clinics within the branches of Nationwide. On top of that, there's leaflets, there's information and there's support, and there's a link to our helpline and also some booked clinics within the charity. So I would strongly advise anybody that's listening to this, if they have experience of dementia or they're worried about dementia, please look at our website and you will find a wealth of information there. If I could just add, as Hilda has already said, you don't have to be a... Uh, you don't have to have a nationwide account. You don't have to bank with them. You don't have to promise that you'll bank with them. It is open to absolutely anybody who wants help. And I can only hope that other businesses or organisations might take up the initiative. Absolutely. Well, brilliant work being done there. Thank you to Nationwide for that. Thank you to John Suchet, uh, broadcaster, and also Dr Hilda Hayo, CEO and Chief Admiral Nurse at Dementia UK for joining us too. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dementia UK, one of their biggest supporters is Manny Singh Kang, who joins me now to let us know about a little bit of a walk he's doing around Molyneux. How are you doing, mate? You OK? Hi, how are you doing, Jason? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good stuff. So, I mean, what are you up to this time? Because there's normally 101 different activities that you're taking part in at <laughs> any time. If you're not walking around something, you're walking to somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, the walking is just... It just it's been incredible the support and the love and you know the amount of um, awareness we've raised from the previous walks we've done and I had a lot of people sort of um contact me and said they'd love to join me they'd love to play a part and and when you walk into Newcastle that's pretty hard to do to, <laughs> to, to, to gather people so um this time I'm walking around the stadium Molly New Stadium um around the perimeter on the outside for 48 hours with no sleep, night and day, which is, again, it's panic, it's crazy, but it gives the opportunity for anybody to, you know, pop up there and just have a chat, have a walk, you know, maybe mm -hmm. feed me, <laughs> give me a drink, <laughs> you know, and um, and hopefully it'll become a bit of a, like a community walk, you know, mm -hmm. with people joining me from all different walks of life, you know. Well the, well, the good thing is there's toilet facilities and kiosks that sell food. So it technically you could take a little detour into the stand and be able to keep uh, yourself going that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, the club have been brilliant over the years anyway. And um, 
yeah, I'm pretty sure um, I'll be able to use their facilities. But then it never, it, there's always the Asda down <laughs> over the road, you know, <laughs> if um, uh, I need some emergency supplies. But my family, uh, friends, colleagues who've, like, you know, I've uh, grown a really tight friendship with over the years through the fundraising will be joining me and, and helping me. Um, one of them's a, a podiatrist, so she's an expert in feet. So, Absolutely. you know, yeah, I'll, need, I'll need that definitely. So, um yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it hopefully again like the other challenges we've done it, it it creates a lot of awareness people share the story and raises a lot of money and you know it's just a an illness uh condition that affects so many people yeah talking to the team for dementia uk earlier on john Suchet, i mean they were saying how uh you, you're looking at potentially 1.6 million people being affected by the condition yeah. by 2040 we we're already at nearly a million now and, so, living, and, yeah. and and it's getting the uh the diagnosis that's the difference and that that can vary depending on yeah. where in the uk you are i mean fingers crossed in wolverhampton we're doing a good job of making sure people yes. get the treatment that can help and the support for the families but yeah it, it's through the work that you're doing for charities like dementia uk that really allow people to get out there and you know the, the nurses the admiral nurses they have that go into people's homes it's it's, it's such an important part of their work it's massively because it's it's pretty much the only system that gives you a direct contact with somebody. If I'm sitting here now, I can ring their hotline, speak directly to a nurse. If I tried to go through the normal channels for me to speak to a nurse, might take me a few days or weeks. Mm. So, um, you know, we, we're pushing the government, uh, you know, to do more MPs have been lobbied by Dementia UK. It can't just be people like myself and other people who join in to raise funds for charities um, you know um, government also has a part to play one in two pe families one in two families will know somebody within their family tree that has has got this condition so you know um, it's, a, it's a big killer unfortunately there is no um, direct you know um, treatment for it so we've got to support those people while they're going through this trauma not just the person who, with the condition it's the families the support network just giving them, you know, a shoulder to lean on almost, you know, and um, and and try and tell them that you're not alone and, and we, there is a facility out there that will help you and guide you through, you know, um, the terrible times that people have to go through. Yeah, and I know the uh, with the support that uh, you get for Samosa Saturday, that's always a popular one. Uh, and, yeah. uh I think the Samosas add to that significantly, but you know, people do still want to support and make a difference there through the walks like this. You've had huge support, and the thing is, though, this wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you. You put yourself forward to do all of this. I think we all thank you uh -huh. for what you do, and uh, yeah, the way in which that uh, it's it's selfless that you come forward and do this. And you know, uh, knowing you, the, the focus is always around the event, isn't it? You're, you're you're part of it, but it's about the event. It is. It truly is. And I always try and you know, with Samosa Saturday and with this event, it, it's a chance for people to join in. People who've never been in fundraising, maybe never um and don't really know maybe haven't don't know how to, how to raise funds or do what they, they can they can join in they can volunteer they can help they can encourage just by sharing the word and and, and spreading the story and that's what's happened especially smosa saturday we've got 20 families jason who previously i didn't know any of them and just through the fundraising they've become family friends they're from all different walks of life all different backgrounds and they all come and help on the day and truly it's a complete team i, I look at uh Samosa saturday now and it's uh, it's me playing a part in a community event that's what i see mm -hmm. and um you know and that's really important that we inspire young people people who've never uh, been uh, you know in in the industry of like giving back and 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 helping others i think people really want to do that uh, sometimes they just don't know where to go so having events like this gives them that avenue i suppose yeah absolutely so how do people get involved and support this event coming up in yes. september at molyneux <laughs> Yeah, September the 26th to the 28th, which coincides with the start of the Liverpool game. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, my link is on all my social media channels. I've kept the same link because, you know, when you do so many events and, and, and having different links, it can quite get quite messy. So I just changed the heading to the, the Dementia UK, uh, just giving page that I've got. Um, you know, and uh, you can find me, Manny Sinkang, on, you know, all social media instagram facebook and 
X and, and it's on my profile there. So you can donate and you can just share. So if you're struggling to donate, you can share the story. But more so, just um, uh, join me, even if it's five minutes, you know, and even it's through your lunch break. And I've had, you know, people from the club who said that they'll come out and join me during their lunch breaks and, and people from afar. I've, I've got people coming from Yorkshire and Newcastle, you know, who've been involved with the walks before and they can't wait to come down on the, uh, for a few hours and, and help and just walk. And, and I think it just, you will also play a part, you, yeah. you know, that's what you'll get. You, you, you'll be playing a part in raising the awareness and, and taking part in the event. There's no cost. There's no cost. There's no entry fees. It's public, you know, right away we'll be walking on. So um, just walk with me and um, uh, support, encourage, share. Uh, and that's how everyone can get involved. Well, uh, that that's hill just out the back of the Billy Wright can be quite steep. Oh, man. Um, yeah, you yeah. Know. I, I, I've <laughs> carried speakers and equipment up that thing too many times. <laughs> to, to, and unfortunately... This it, it, this is September. It's still going to be sunny, isn't it? In the winter, yeah. It, it, you, the, the, Steve Sutton and the team need to do a bit of gritting out there to make it good. But uh, you'll be okay. Yeah, you know what? I, that slope. People have taught me. It talked to me and said, "Which way are you going? Are you going clockwise, anti-clockwise?" I think I'll have to go a bit of a bit of both because actually walking downhill, especially after long periods, is mm -hmm. it's actually not very easy. It has a lot of impact on your knees. So. I think I'll have to mix it up and yeah, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. And, and it's funny because you think of a football stadium and you think, well, it's obviously just going to be flat around a football stadium because the pitch is flat, but Wolves are unique because uh, there's pretty much no flat bits probably around back of the club shop yeah. a little it, bit. It's called the South Bank for a reason though, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Oh, good luck with it. Have a great time. Justgiving.com forward slash M Kang is uh, how you can find that page directly. Search for Manny Singh yeah. Kang on the socials. You won't have to search far. You'll find him quite easily. Manny, always good <laughs> to speak to you, mate. Thank you for joining us. Have a great time with that one. And let's get loads of people involved. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> The Real Art Workshop are doing their thing as part of Yo Wolverhampton. I'm joined now by Alex and Gary from the team. How are you doing? All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. So, first of all, Alex, you've got a, a number of workshops running with Yo Wolves over the summer. So, tell us a, a bit about what's going on. Yes, yeah, so we're doing two full weeks of activities. They're sort of mostly art activities. Um, it's for the half scheme. So it's families that are in receipt of um, a benefit related um, free school meal. Um, and we're doing lots of different activities. So we're looking at some famous artists, for example, Matisse, Elizabeth Catlett. Um, there's an artist called Kandinsky. Um, we've had some visiting artists that have done workshops with us as well. So it's not just us two delivering as other people. Um, so Becky came and did the Kandinsky workshop using old CDs with wool weaving on those. So it's we're always looking for new ideas. And of course, the emphasis is on about healthy living as well. So um, how important water is and sleep, uh, people's diets and um, keeping active. So we're trying to integrate that into all the sessions as well. And Gary's leading on the BSL side of that, so teaching them. Uh, so teaching some uh, last week we looked at fruits and vegetables uh, different signs for those in British Sign Language and then we played some games for example bingo but using the same vocabulary and people win prizes for that sort of thing and this afternoon we're teaching about the sports and other activities so different signs for those and we're also teaching about some deaf awareness as well so what it's like to be deaf the importance of the language and the culture, that sort of thing, um, and greetings as well. So I had to meet a deaf person saying hello, thank oh, you, that sort of thing, and I've done really well. And sometimes this will be the first time kids have encountered British Sign Language, won't it, Gary? Well, uh, Some well, have never met a deaf person before, so, again, it's nice. You can have a role model, well, and that's nice for them to have a new experience. And Alex, I mean, this is something which is running throughout the whole of the summer and lots of opportunities for kids to get involved. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, there's not only us doing it, there's loads of providers all over Wolverhampton, all doing different things. Some are more focused on sports, 
So there's lots, there's plenty of choice, which can be found on the websites, the O-Walls websites. Um, uh, so they can just, families can have a look. Uh, and these are free for those eligible families as well. So there's no cost. We don't charge for tuition for our, for our particular activity um, or the materials. Everything's included and they get a free meal as well, which is part of the scheme. And what's the the favourite part of both for both of you on these events? Difficult to choose. There's so much, but but there was one last week. Ah, we were doing a pop art session. It's a very vibrant and bright, and people were using different slogans to do with that. And children are so great because they have their own ideas um, and they look fantastic. But I love working with the children because uh, obviously we're there as like teachers in a, in a way, although it's much more flexible than school structure. But we learn a lot from the children as well because they'll tell us things and they'll show us their way of doing things. So we're constantly learning at the same time. So it's not only us sort of telling you what to do. It's a shared experience. So it's a two-way street. Oh, but- and some children um, who have been involved in our sessions before, so we've done these before, will do their own presentations as well. And some of the ch- children oh, become vol- uh, volunteers for us as well. Uh, so, well yeah, they've been uh, participants uh, in the past, and this time, uh, so, and they can become volunteers as well. So it's a nice opportunity. I suppose what we're trying to show as well is that you can have a career in art, because yes. you know we hear that there's not many opportunities to do art for children, you know, outside of school. Um, so this is a nice sort of experience for them and, and look at a company like ours who are doing art, you know, that they could think, well, possible to have a career in that in the future. Yeah, whether it be selling your own goods on Etsy or maybe becoming the next big thing at the National Gallery. Absolutely. We like to think that we, you know, show children there's no um, limits really to your ambition. Uh, I think sometimes too often young people are told there's no money in art, you know, it's never make a living, no point in doing it. So they get veered off to do other careers, which is fine if they're interested in that. But it's a shame if they're really sort of uh, interested in art, not to follow that up, you know, and have, you know, believe that they can actually earn a living in the future. Because it's so wide range, as you know, the art covers media as well. It's it's a massive world. And sometimes children... uh, think that all they have to become an art teacher for example but yeah you've got lots of different careers walk up to gallery stuff we could like you say having a business of your own set it up to sell your own things there's loads of opportunities there's no limits really so and gary is there any of your art on display as part of this (laughs) no not yet Ah. but um well we probably will do uh in other projects, we oh. use Gary's artwork quite a lot. He integrates beer selling oh. his art quite a lot, so the hands feature. Um, oh. And then there was one called Two Worlds, which we did at a school recently, Warstone School. I've got a, a deaf resource base. Um, did a whole project uh, about his, his picture, Two Worlds, which we made up of different squares, so the children each had a square each, and printed in the background was a, an audiogram. Oh. So oh. each sort of person with hearing loss will go to audiology and have a, a chart printed with their unique, you know, it's unique to them, their hearing left and right ear on a chart. So that was the background. We painted on top of that, um, this image that Gary had painted originally of two hands linked like this, the sign for, um, you know, coming together, union. Uh, so it's about two worlds, deaf and hearing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, and we've also got some postcards with that printed on with uh, uh, what the children made at the library. So you can go to Central Library in Wolverhampton. We think we're still in there uh, as part of the NHS uh, uh, project. And the, the two worlds, they're bright yellow, so they're very easy to spot. So you could pick up these postcards for free. Okay. Go along, grab those, become part of Yo Wolves as well yowolves.co.uk for details of the events and it's the holiday activities fund the half if you you can be part of that these events are free for you to attend and they are absolutely amazing these two guys are hugely talented you'll love it if you get to go along thank you gary and alex
Thank you so much, Jason. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's it all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me back with episode 790 next week. Hope to see you then. Good afternoon. Goodbye from the mill bar. 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 Yeah. Goodbye from the mill bar. Yeah.